Well, before I start, I want to give all honors and glories and praises to Yahweh, Baha Shem, Yahweh Shai, Baha Shem, Baha Wachachodash, Yahweh, which is the only true name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, but his one only true name is Yahweh Shai. Giving double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone because those are the men who I've learned this truth from through the spirit and power of Yahweh Baha Shem Yahweh Shai. Peace, blessings, salutations to the whole full elect. And shalom to you, sincere brothers scattered abroad, pushing forth this word in truth and sincerity. I am the brother Mashiach Arazaka from the servants of Yahweh Wai Yahweh Shai Camp, Las Vegas, Nevada branch. And pretty much in this lesson, it's going to be titled as Salvation. Is only for the Israelites. Now, in this lesson, it's going to be a little bit more add-ons to the precepts. Because, you know, usually I go over the basic seven, eight precepts. But this one's going to be a little different. Because we're going to go into Romans, the second chapter. Also, bringing out, proving that, you know, you had Israelites that were uh, put as Gentiles. All right. And you also got um, precepts in there where it's uh, talking about John 3.16. That's where we're going to start at. That that's talking about Israel too. John 3.16 and Galatians 3.28. So low one through the spirit this lesson is edifying because you got Christians that's in the 501c3. They'll come at you with um that salvation is for everybody. So we're going to start in John 3 and 16. And we're going to break that down. So when you go into John 3 and 16, it says world there. So they you got Jakes that literally believe or people in general that literally believe that when you see world, it's talking about the whole entire world. But that word world is not talking about the whole world. It's talking about the Israelites. So we're going to read it and then we're going to go into the Greek and pull the information out. So a little one is less is edifying. This is Galatians 3.28. I'm going to read it for verbatim. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but ha but have everlasting life. So you got people that's in the religious world of Christianity, Apostolic, Jehovah Witness, Seventh Day Adventist, Mormon, Baptist, right? They'll read this scripture right here, and they always assume that this word "world" that's in the precept is talking about everybody in the world. It doesn't matter who you are. You could be red, black, purple, blue, orange, green. It doesn't matter. God loves everybody because he sent his only begotten son to die for us. Everybody. When they read this scripture, that's what the interpretation they get from it. But that's not what this scripture is talking about. So let's read it one more time. John 3 and 16. It says, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would not believe in. Who, who, it says, whosoever, whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So when you go into the interliner, right? And you go into the meaning of that word world, right? Strong's G, 2889, cosmos, cosmos. So when you go into the word world there, when you go into the Greek, it's G2889, right? It's, it's, it's G2889, which is cosmos, right? And it means... And an attempt or or, or harm, harmony, harm, harmonious arrangement or constitution, order, or government. That's talking about the Israelites. That's what that's talking about. When it goes into the constitution, order, or government, that's talking about the Israelites. All right? That's what that's talking about. That's talking about the Israelites. Now, to prove this, and I also want to go to uh, Galatians 3 and 28. <laughs> We're going to knock both of these precepts out and we're going to link it up with Acts 6 and 1. All you got to do is read Acts 6 and 1. All right. Because that word Greek, that word Grecian there in Acts 6 and 1 goes into the Greek word of, of Hellenist. You had Israelites that were Hellenized with a Gentile state of mind. All right. You had Israelites of the flesh that were basically speaking Greek. They were speaking Greek. They were dressing Greek. They were in the ways of the Greeks. They were Israelites in the flesh, but they were in a Hellenistic period going into. Actually, we're going to get the uh, the dates also looking it up, proving that Israelites were Hellenized. All right. Through the through the period of Alexander the Greek, Greek, Alexander the Greek through the four generals. Right. You got Alexander the Greek. You had that period, which was, I believe, 
296 BCE to uh, 3, 332 BCE. Then you had the Ptolemaic uh, rule, right? And that took place. So we're going to get that out too. Proving that Israelites were Hellenized, which those Gentiles that you're reading in John uh, John 316, uh, John 316 and Galatians 328, that's talking about Israelite foreigners. Those Gentiles were Israelites of the flesh that had a Gentile state of mind. Galatians 3 and 28, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in your house. So you got Christians that read this too. They'll say, see, it doesn't matter if you're an Israelite. Uh, Greeks too can can be saved, but that's not what that's talking about. That word Greek, that Greek, in this word of Galatians 3, 28, that's talking about Israelite foreigners that had a Greek mindset. So when you go to uh, Acts uh, 6 and 1, right? It says, and in those days when the number of the disciples were, mu were multiplied, there arose a murmuring of Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Now, when you go into the interliner of that word Grecian there, which we're going to get, right? Because a Greek, a Greek is a Grecian, right? It goes into the word he he Helleni Hellenistes, which is Hellenists, right? Strong's G, 1675, Hellenistes, Hellenistes. See, a Hellenist, one who imitates the manner and customs or the worship of the Greeks, right, and use the Greek tongue. So you had Israelites of the flesh, they were in the ways of the Greeks. They spoke Greek, they dressed Greek, they were in the ways of the Greek, Greek Greeks. They were Hellenized. In the, Hellen in the Hellenistic period, which I'm going to get out right now, it says used in the New Testament of Jews born in foreign lands and speaking Greek. You had Israelites that were scattered abroad throughout the world, right? Just like in a previous lesson I just did, proving that the Israelites are scattered. So you had Israelites that were Hellenized. They were Israelites of the flesh, but they were in the ways of the Greeks. Uh, Cornelius was an Israelite. Yeah, he was of that Italian band, but he was an Israelite going to, uh, I think it's that Acts 2 and 5, devout men, right? And it says right here, G, G, G1672, a Hellenist or Greek speaking Jew or Grecian. So you had Israelites that were in the ways of the Greeks. They were speaking Greek, dressing Greek. They were in the ways of the Greeks. They were Israelites of the flesh, right? It says up here. It says to copy the manner, to copy the manners and the worship of the Greeks or to use Greek language. Right. A Hellenist, one who imitates the manner and the customs or the worship of the Greeks and uses the Greek tongue employed in the in the NT, meaning the New Testament of Jews born. So when you see those Gentiles that's mentioned in Galatians 3, 28, you see Greek. Or you go to Romans, the chapter, Romans, the second chapter, it talks about the Israel, the Jew first and then the Gentile. That's talking to the Gentile. It's talking about the Israelite foreigners that were Hellenized. That's what it's talking about. It's talking about the Israelites that were Hellenized. And there's scriptures all through the scriptures to back that up. Look at that. See that G that G 1675. See that? See, look at that. Which they were coming to Antioch spake unto the Grecians. Preaching the word, preaching the word of Yahweh Shai. Those are Israelites. All through that. These are the precepts to link up with that. These are all Israelites, Israelite foreigners. Right? See, these were all talking about Israelites, man. So it's not talking about when you read the scriptures, it's not talking about those Gentiles being uh uh heathen nations can be saved. No, that's not what that's talking about. Now we're gonna get um we're gonna go and get some uh get this out, right? Let's get this out. Get that ancient Israelites, right? Oops, it's a lock here. Ancient Israelites. Hellenization. Hellenistic period. 
Now, you can look this up. Anybody can look this up. Ancient Israelites Hellenistic period. It says historical references the Hellenistic area, the, the Hellenistic or era in Israel is divided into four historical phases. So you had the Israelites that were Hellenized, right? They were in the ways of the Greeks. They couldn't keep the laws. They couldn't do any of that. If they were caught doing that, they were put to death. And you can read that in 2 Maccabees, the 6th chapter. I think it's 1 Maccabees or 2 Maccabees, the 6th chapter, where any Israelite was, was caught doing this. Their practices of circumcision or keeping the laws or anything like that, they were put, they were, they were put to death for that. So you had the Israelites that were Hellenized. They were under the... They were under the, uh, the, 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 the Greek and Roman Empire, right? Their, their, their Hellenistic period. It says, historical references, the Hellenistic era in Israel is divided into four historical phases. It says, the conquest of Palestine by Alexander the Greek, right? And its aftermath. So from the year 296 BCE to 332 BCE, that was, that was Alexander the rule. Then you had the, poly, the, the the Ptolemaic rule, which was from 296 to, 20, to 201 to 296 BCE. Then you had the, 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 Sel the Seleucid rule, which happened in 104 BCE to 200 BCE. And then you had the Hasmonean rule, which was from 64 and a half, 3 BCE to 104 BCE. See, so you had you had Israelites that were Hellenized. These are the the dates and the times of, the, of those areas that happen. So those Gentiles that everybody is is mentioning in the scriptures, right? They're talking about in the scriptures, right? That oh, those Gentiles or 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 or, 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 or heathens. No, those Gentiles are Israelites due to the Hellenistic period at those times. So you had Israelites that were Hellenized. Now, when you go to Romans the second chapter, and this is why I want to read it. All right. This is, um, it says, Romans 2 and 1. It says, Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judges, for wherein thou judges another, thou condemnest thyself, for thou that judges doest the same thing. But we are sure that the, that the judgment of Yahweh is according to the truth against them which commit such things. Because you had Israelites out there, that, you had the Israelites that were being, you know, in the ways of the Gentiles. You know, wicked, being in the way of the Gentiles, the heathens, right? Because they were falling the ways of the heathen. Verse 3, it says, Thinkest thou this, O man, that judges them which do such things, and does the same, that thou should, that thou shalt escape the judgment of the Lord? Verse 4, Or doest thou in the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of, of Yahweh leadeth thee to repentance? Verse 5, but after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasures up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation, which is the reveal of the righteous judgment of the Lord, who will render every man according to his deeds. Because that's how the Lord is going to do his judgment, right? Every man is going to be rendered according to his deeds. It says to them who by patient continuance in well-being seek for, for glory and honor and immortality, right? Eternal life, right? And that's what the hopeful elect is uh, hoping for, which we're hoping for, right? We're hoping to receive that eternal life, right? Verse 8, but unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, right? Indignation and wrath, because that's the majority of our people. They, they have, they're Israelites of the flesh, but they have that still have that Gentile state of mind. They're embedded in the ways of the heathen. So they're cast out as Gentiles, right? They have a Hellenistic mindset. Verse 9, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil of the Jew first and also to the Gentile. Remember, the Gentile goes into uh, 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 goes into uh, the Hellenists, the Israelites that are Hellenized. So when it says to the Jew first, talking about the Israelite, it, it also to the Gentile, also of the Gentile, which is the Israelite foreigner. It says, but glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good to the Jew first and also to the Gentile, right? Also to the Gentile. The Gentile is talking about the Israelite of the flesh. They have a Gentile state of mind. They spoke Greek. They dressed Greek. They were in the ways of the Greek. We proved that already. For there is no respect of persons with the Most High. So I just wanted to read that because you got people that read Romans 2 
And they'll think that this is talking about natural Gentiles as well. And that's not. That's talking about Israelites. That's all talking about Israelites. To the Jew first, it's talking about Israelites. And then to the to the Gentile, and also of the Gentile, that's talking about Israelites of the flesh. It has a Gentile state of mind. So when you see precepts like that, that's talking about Israelites. It's still talking about Israelites, man. All right? Salvation is to the Israelites. Now, let's back it up with some more precepts. Isaiah 45 and verse uh, 17. It's Isaiah 45 and 17. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. See, we have an everlasting salvation. Salvation is only given to the Israelites. Not everybody is going to be saved. Not everybody in the world is going to be saved. The Israelites is going to be saved. The elect of the nation of Israel is going to be saved. Not every single Hebrew Israelite is going to be saved. Because the scriptures talk about that in uh, Zechariah uh, 13 and 8. Right? Zechariah 13 and 8. And I'm going to get that out in a minute. This is Isaiah 45, 17. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. So salvation is only given to the Israelites. Not every single person of the world is going to be saved. All right. Salvation is only for the Israelites. All right. And only the elect of the nation of Israel is going to be saved because not all Israel is going to be saved. Let's prove that. You know, everything I'm saying, I want to prove it. 13 and 8. Right. That's why I said this lesson is going to be a little different. Because we're going to go into it and get everything out. Zechariah 13 and 8. And it shall come to pass that in all the land. And this is a prophecy that has not come yet. It's going to come, but it hasn't, it hasn't been fulfilled yet. This is why, again, you got people not understanding that there's prophecies in the Old Testament that has not come to pass yet. That's why the Lord, that's why Yahweh Shai ain't here yet. Because there's prophecies in the Old Testament that have not been fulfilled. Not all the prophecies in the Old Testament have been fulfilled. You got prophecies that still have to come to pass that ain't been fulfilled yet. And this is one of them, Zechariah 13 and 8. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, say of the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. The two-thirds, two-thirds of our people are going to be put to death. They're going to be destroyed in thermonuclear fire if they don't repent. This is why you should be repenting and coming out of the ways of society. This is why the men of the Lord are out there on the highways and byways preaching his word and teaching it in truth and sincerity, right? Doing the works, right? Working out their own salvation individually. Because you don't want to be in a congregation of the two-thirds. That's what's going to happen to a lot of individuals. They're going to be put in the congregation of the two-thirds. None of us want that. You don't want that. I don't want that. It says, but the third shall be left therein. The third is talking about the one-third, which is uh, the 144,000 elect men. You also have the elect under that that's going to be saved. But not all Israel is going to be saved. You're going to have the 144,000, which is the elect men, all men. The elect men is the 144,000. Then you have the elect that's under that. And all of us are hoping and praying to be of that number. Lord willing, you know. So not every single Israelite is going to be saved. All right. Two thirds of them are going to be destroyed. They're going to be put to death here. All right. This is uh, Psalms 147 in verse 19, right? It's all in the scriptures. It says, he showed his word unto Jacob. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. So that's who the Lord is dealing with, the Israelites. Verse 20, he have not dealt so with any nation. See, the Lord ain't dealt so with any nation. Not no Edomite, not no Hamite, right? Not no Moabite, right? Not no Persians, right? Not no Greeks. The Lord ain't dealing with none of those heathen nations, man. He's not dealing with you 17 heathen nations. Now, there is Israelites that scattered amongst those Heathens. You got Israelites that's in captivity to those 17 heathen nations. You got Israelites that's scattered amongst those heathens. Right? So this is why, again, we don't judge on the outward appearance. We don't go off of skin color to, to determine who's an Israelite. It's mainly through the spirit. Right? Psalms 147 and 20. It says, He have not dealt so with any nation, and as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. See, the Lord ain't dealing with you 17 heathen nations. He's only dealing with the Israelites. Right. Only the Israelites is going to receive salvation. This is Acts three and one. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you. O children of Israel. He didn't say everybody. He said, O children of Israel. Against the whole family. Right. Which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, verse two, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. So that's what the Lord is dealing with. The Israelites. Right. It says, therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. This is why we're going through a temporal punishment. Because our forefathers, they broke the old covenant. They didn't keep the law, statutes, and commandments. Right? So this is why we're suffering. We're going through a punishment. But the Lord is only dealing with the Israelites. This is what we're proving. 
Lord is only dealing with the Israelites, man. Matthew 1 and 21. We're going to prove that too. Because the Messiah, he only died for the Israelites. He died for us so we could be able to repent. So we can have repentance, man. The Lord died for us so we could be able to have repentance, man. Right? He died for the Israelites. This is Matthew 1 and 21. And she shall bring forth a son. Who is this talking about? The mother of Yahawashai, Miriam, which they call Mary. It says, and thou shalt call his name Yahawashai. And yet, Yahawashai is the true name of the Messiah. It's not Jesus. All right? Jesus is not the true name of the Messiah. Because when you go into H3091, that's Yahawashai. That's not, that's, that's not uh, Jesus. Jesus, the letter J is only 500 years old. The Messiah is over 2,000 years old. So Jesus is not his name. And Yeshua is not his name because there's no E in the Hebrew. There's only uh, 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. All right? And the Hebrew alphabet is only 22 letters. Now you have five letters that's recently been added to the English translation, which is the letter J, E, U, V, and F. Those are the five letters of the Greek that's recently been added. That's only 500 years old. So how could the Messiah's name be Jesus Christ when the letter J is only 500 years old? The letter E is only 500 years old. And the letter U is only 500 years old. The Messiah is over 2,000 years old. So Jesus is not the name of the Messiah. Yeshua is not the name of the Messiah either. There's no U and there's no E. So you got to know the name of the Lord. It's Yahweh Shai. Yah means he. Yahweh Shai means savior or deliver. It's in the scriptures. For he shall save his people. See, not everybody. His there. If it was everybody, it would say, for he shall save every people or all people. For he shall save all people from their sins. It don't say that. It says, for he shall save his people. It's like a person have a phone. That's his phone. A person has a, has, a, has, a, has a tablet. That's his tablet. A person has a car, that's his car. That belongs to him, his, all right? He's walking with his family. He has his family there. That's his family. That's not everybody's family. That's his family. You see that? So, again, it's speaking plural. It's, it's giving you a distinction, letting you know who the Lord is, is dying for, who he's saving, right? It says, for he shall save his people from their sins. So, it's not all people there. Again, John 3, 16, that's talking about the Israelites. That goes into cosmos, which goes into government, constitutional order. That's talking about the Israelites. All right? Acts 5. Right? And we're going to start at verse 29. Acts 5 and 29. And then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey Yahweh rather than men. Right? Verse 30. It says, The power of our fathers raised up Yahweh Shai. Whom ye slew and hung on a tree. Verse 31. Him have the Most High exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for. To give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. So that's who the Lord is dealing with. He's not dealing with everybody. Salvation is not given to everybody. Alright. So again, now that you know, you know that Israelites. And actually, let's keep going. I got more on that. You know, we're going to add more to this. Now, actually, I'm going to read up. We're going to read up, actually. Because, you know, brothers always read down to verse 7. But we're going to read up. It says, the, it says the 12 disciples instructions for service. So who did who did the, the 12 apostles go to? Yahweh Shai chose his 12 apostles, right? Who did they go to? Let's read it. Because we're going to get the names of the 12 apostles as well. And where they went to. This is uh, Matthew 10 and 1. And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, his 12 apostles, right? Let's get it. He gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases. That's what, that's what Yahweh Shai done through the spirit. The Lord gave Yahweh Shai those capabilities, right? Verse 2, it says, now the names of the 12 apostles are these. These are the names of the 12 apostles. Now the names of the 12 apostles are these. The first Shimeon, I mean Simon, the first Simon, Salakia, who is called Peter, Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, and John and his and John, his brother, Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, Matthew, the publican, James, the son of of Alephaeus, right? And and and, and Lebius, whose surname is Thaddeus, right? It says Simon the Canaanite. Now Simon was an Israelite that lived in the city of Canaan. All right. If you if you live in if you're an Israelite and you lived in the city of Rome, you're going to be called a Roman. 
He lived in the city of Rome. He was a Roman citizen. It's the same thing with Simon. Simon was an Israelite. He lived in the Can he lived in the city of Canaan, so he was called a Canaanite. Just like today. We're Israelites of the flesh, but we're not called Israelites in this society. We're called what? American citizens. It's the same thing there. Simon the Canaanite, who was an Israelite, and Judas the Iscariot also it says Judas the Iscariot, who also betrayed him, who betrayed the Messiah. Verse five. These twelve Yahweh sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles. Now, this Gentile right here is talking about natural. This precept right here is talking about natural Gentiles. So, Yahweh Shai told the, told the apostles not to go to the natural Gentiles. He said, he said, go not into the way of the Gentiles, the natural Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans, into you not. Because you got two types of Gentiles. You have Israelite foreigners with a Gentile state of mind. And you have natural heathens, which is not of Israelite descent. They are natural heathen, which is a Gentile. So you got two types of Gentiles. You got Israelite foreigners and you got Gentiles that's not of Israelite descent. That's a heathen. That's the Gentiles. You got two types of Gentiles. This scripture in Matthew 10 and 5 is talking about natural Gentiles. It says, go not into the way of the Gentiles and enter into any city of the Samaritans. Enter ye not. So he told them, don't go to the Gentiles, the natural Gentiles. Verse 6, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Who are the lost sheep of the house of Israel? The Israelites that were that were Hellenized. The Israelites that had a Greek, that, that had a Greek mindset. They were Israelites of the flesh, but they had a, a Gentile state of mind. They were in the ways of the Greeks. They followed the Greeks. They were speaking Greek. They were dressing Greeks. We read that. We went to Acts 6 and 1. So he said, Go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's why Apostle Paul. He went to those, he writ those letters to those foreigner Israelites in those regions. You had Titus that went to the city of Crete to talk to those Cretans. Those were Israelites. All through the scriptures the, the, that the 12 apostles went to and writ letters to and went to were Israelites in those regions. Those are all Israelites. When they received the utterance of the speaking in tongues, that was speaking different languages. Because not all the Israelites were speaking Hebrew. You had Israelites that were learning all these, that were speaking all these different languages. The Lord gave them the gift to be able to translate what they were bringing out through the scriptures. Just like right now, you got brothers that can speak Japanese. You got brothers that can speak Spanish. You got brothers that can speak Chinese. They can speak many different languages. You got brothers that got those capabilities. That was that utterance. Being able to speak different languages. Not speaking gibberish. Speaking different languages. Actual languages. Languages that can be understood. All right? Verse 6, it says, But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Verse 7, And as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. So that's who the apostles were sent for. That's who the Messiah died for, the Israelites. So we can be able to get this temporal grace. There is a temporal grace, but it's only given to the Israelites. Right? It's not given to the heathen. We can prove that as well. And I believe that's in, um, thinking off the top of the head, because um, we can bring that out as well. And, um, let me get that precept out. Actually, I think it's in uh, Hebrews 12 and 16. The water. Got brain fart for a minute. Hebrews 12 and 16, right? Let's get that out. This is to prove that salvation is not for everybody. It's for the Israelites. This is Hebrews 12 and 16. It says, lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau. Esau is the so-called white man. That's who Esau is. Esau eat him. It says, who for one musel, one morsel or meat sold his birthright. Verse 17. For ye know how that afterward when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. Right. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. So Esau can't repent. He don't have repentance. You don't have salvation. None of these 17 heathen nations have salvation. They don't have repentance. They can't repent. You could get you a King James Bible. You can read it from Genesis to Revelations. You can do all the prayers, the so-called prayers you want. If you a heathen nation, you don't have repentance. You don't have repentance. You're, you cannot repent. You don't have salvation. Salvation is only given to the Israelites. And let me get out that Jeremiah. Uh, not Jeremiah. Was it Jeremiah? Uh, it wasn't Jeremiah. It was, um, yeah, it was Jeremiah. Salakia. This is Jeremiah. Um and 23 we're gonna wrap it up with this right here this is jeremiah 3 and 23 jeremiah 3 and 23 truly in vain is salvation hoped for from the multitude uh, from salakia truly I'm, I'm jumping the gun salakia jeremiah 3 and 23 truly in vain is salvation hoped for 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 from the hills and from the multitude of mountains 
whose hope for salvation is vain? These 17 heathen nations, their hope for salvation is vain. They can't, they can't get salvation. It's vain for them. It's vain for them. From the multitude of mountains of hill. That's talking about the 17 heathen nations. Their hope for salvation is vain. But truly in the Lord our power is salvation of Israel. So salvation is only given to Israel, which goes into the Revelation 7 and 9, right? That multitude, right? That multitude, that's talking about the elect of the nation of Israel that's going to receive that salvation. So again, salvation is not for everybody. We proved in the scriptures that uh, John 3.16 and Galatians 3.28 is talking about Israelites who were Hellenized. And we proved in the scriptures that when you read in the scriptures where it talks about to the Jew first and to the Gentile, that's talking about Israelite foreigners. We proved in the scriptures, we went through secular history. Just to do a quick hit of showing the different dynasties of what took place of the Hellenistic period of the ancient Israelites. So according to the scriptures, and we prove who the Messiah died for, we did all that in this lesson. Salvation is only given to the Israelites, not every person of the earth. Salvation is only given to the Israelites who consist of you so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native American Indians scattered abroad. And again, it doesn't matter about skin tone. It doesn't matter how white you are. It doesn't matter if your eyes is blue. The scriptures say not to judge on outward appearance. With, with, the, with the truth that we've learned, which has got the 100% truth of Great Millstone, according to Numbers 1 and 18, it doesn't matter about your skin tone. It doesn't matter about your hair, your freckles, your body shape. How, that doesn't determine if you're Israelite. All right? Your spirit bear witness. The scriptures say the spirit bear witness, man. All right? Let me get that out. Uh, the spirit bear of witness. Let me get that out real quick. All right. Let me see if I can get that. And I believe that's in. Uh, I'm just thinking off top of the head. Um. Here it is, right here. Romans eight and sixteen. Let's get that. This is Romans eight and verse sixteen. And this is why we don't judge on outward appearance. Also, going to 1 Samuel, uh, I think it's uh, 16 and 7, right? Where it says, judge not on outward appearance. This is Romans 8 and 16. The spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of Yahweh. See? So the spirit bear witness. We're discontinued from our heritage. So we don't judge on the outward appearance. Oh, you're, you're white. Oh, you're this, you're that. You're not an Israelite. No, we don't do that. Now, you got other Israelite groups that do that bugged out shit. But according to the scriptures, the spirit bear witness. All right. It all determines on the spirit is mainly through faith. All right. Because we don't know exactly what tribe we are, but we do know we're Israelites due to the curses and the things that we deal with on a daily basis. And especially if you are of the, of the elect, you know, we don't know who the elect is. But if you are of the elect, you know, Lord willing, if we are, that number would be delivered. But, you know, we're the hopeful elect because the Lord does his calling. If you called into this thing and you're teaching and you're and you look like a heathen and you're willing to call upon the name of the Lord, you want to do the works, then you are an Israelite because only an Israelite is going to do that, not no fucking heathen. So, hey, Lord, one is that so edifying. So, like you for the rambling. I want to give all honors and glories and praises to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Yahweh Kakodash, Yahweh, which is one true name of the Heavenly Father, and Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. But his one true name is Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the others and Apostle Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, salutations to the whole for the elect. And shalom to you, sincere brother scattered abroad, pushing forth this word in truth and sincerity. I'm the brother Mashiach Arazaka from the servants of Yahweh Yahweh Shai camp, Las Vegas, Nevada branch. And Lord willingness, that's as edifying. To next time I say shalom. So again, salvation is only for the Israelites, not all people. Shalom.